Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. I uh, just returned from a walk um, here around my neighborhood. It is a beautiful fall day in Northern California. And um, anyway, I'm gonna go to work now. But um, I was just thinking about something when I was walking and I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, you know, last week there was a story that broke out about Sharon Stone, um, the actress, and um, the fact that she had this large fibroid that was misdiagnosed several times and um, finally, you know, she had it removed very recently. And she talks about her journey about how, you know, she was sort of dismissed. She was not treated very well at these medical facilities where she was just told, oh, it's okay, or you don't need to do anything about it. And finally, you know, the truth came out. She actually had a very large fibroid and she needed it removed and she finally went through that surgery. So it was very interesting to me to kind of read that because, you know, Sharon Stone is an actress, um, you know, presumably she has all the connections, she has a lot of money, um, she'd be able to get in to see the best doctors quickly, and yet her story was very similar to that of many patients that I see on a regular basis. So my patients are not movie stars or have the best access to, you know, the most amazing doctors all the time, but, you know, the story was the same. And it really got me thinking. Um, there's a lot of talk now about medical gaslighting. There was a recent New York Times article about how, especially for women and women of color, we're often dismissed um, You know, when it comes to complaints of pain or complaints of, hey, there's something really not right with me, like take a look. Um, and you know, we're just sort of blown off. And here there was this actress who was undergoing the same situation and living the same story. So I wanted to share with you three things that um, I think are helpful for patients to know, um, you know, when you seek medical care. So number one, not all doctors are the same. Um, and it's true, we all went to medical school, but the, the similarities kind of end there, right? Because it depends um, after that what, what your interest is and what kind of specialty you pursue. And all doctors know a little bit about everything, but you know, we all spend years studying that one field that we practice. So um, for OBGYN, we do four years of training after medical school. Um, for cardiology, they do three years of internal medicine and another fellowship in cardiology. So every, every specialty is very different. And sometimes I see patients say, oh, well, you know, I just went to my primary care doctor and they told me that, you know, um, I have a fibroid and it's fine. I don't need to do anything about it. And yet when they come to me, I see a lot of risk factors and then I'm counseling them in a completely different way. And so I encourage you to, you know, find the highest level of care that you can for your specific problem, especially if you're not quite sure, you know, what you should do. And um, this is a little tricky because it depends where you are in the country, it depends where your insurance is like, sometimes you need prior auth to see, you know, a specialist. And so the best thing you can do is just get to the closest, you know, medical facility that you can to get an answer, but don't let it end there. Um, really try to seek out a specialist. Just like if a patient came to me with chest pain, I could tell her a lot of things about chest pain and kind of triage her basically, you know, do you need to go to the ER? Do you, you know, uh, is this, actually not chest pain, is this some other type of pain? I could probably do a basic workup, but then guess what? I would really want you to see a cardiologist because they are the experts in this. So remember that if you are diagnosed with fibroids, really any medical condition that you're a little bit confused about um, or that you really want more information on, seek the highest level of care that is available to you. Number two, don't be afraid to seek a second opinion. So. In my practice, patients, um, you know, sometimes they come for a consult, they hear everything I have to say about the treatment of fibroids or whatever it is that they're coming to, uh, coming for. And then they say, you know, I hope you're not um, offended, but um, is it okay if I, you know, go see Dr. So-and-so um, and just get their opinion? And I actually love that when patients say that because that means that they are proactive about their health, that they want to make the best decision that they can. And so if you have that opportunity to see, you know, somebody else as well, just to make sure that you're doing the right thing, be it nothing or be it surgery for something, that you are making the right decision. So don't be afraid to seek a second opinion. And number three, um, do your research at the highest level possible. And 
you know, looking up Dr. Google is so tempting for all of us. You know, at 2 a.m. in the morning, you're like, oh my gosh, I have this lower abdominal pain. You know, what could it be? Or I have um, leg swelling. What could it be? And there's like, you know, a hundred different things that it could be, right? Um, and even doctors do this, I hate to say. Um, but we also use Dr. Google, but there is a lot of fake news out there. And the great thing about social media is that you know, a lot of physicians now are putting themselves out there. They have their own YouTube channels, their own Instagram, um, you know, channels and their own TikTok um, handles and specialists and, and actual doctors who've gone through medical school and training are putting out their thoughts on various topics. So this is, this is actually a really good thing. And I would suggest that this is where you get your information from. So say you're, you have an appointment with a doctor, but you want to get some information about, you know, whatever it is that you're experiencing and you want to read up a little bit about it have a list of questions these are all really good but um, make sure you're getting this information from a reliable source and i think just visiting a doctor's web page or their social media handles is one of the best ways um, because we know that there's a lot of junk out there and this is really harmful to patients um, again in my own specialty with fibroids i can't tell you how many emails I get or websites I see that are promising the supplement and this oil that's going to shrink your fibroids and take care of you and all that. And none of this is evidence-based. So, you know, just go right to the source. And I actually love following various dermatologists and plastic surgeons. Myself, as a doctor, I learned so much um, from these other physicians. So I would encourage you to do that. So just to review, um, I think this is important information to think about when you are seeking um, healthcare, when you are seeking an appointment for a specific issue that you're facing. Just remember, number one, not all doctors are the same. Um, number two, don't be afraid to get a second opinion. And number three, do your research at the highest level possible. So I hope this was helpful for you. Um, please post a comment if it was. And if you have any other questions, let me know as well. Um, I hope you guys have a beautiful Wednesday and um, please tag a friend uh, or family member who needs to hear this. Okay, see you later. I'm off to work now. Bye.